We could go down the list and we could look at all these fantastic players. And yes, I left some off and Luke and all that. But when it comes down to KD, he's one of one. And for his scoring and getting buckets, he's been carrying that title for about a decade, a little over a decade now. Okay. So again, I'm standing on business on big. I want to head back to the desk, but Please. let's just take one Please. one look at this Please. list at Kendrick uh, Perkins' big list yeah. here. In case you are living under a rock, Luka Doncic is having a phenomenal 2023-24 season. He has been averaging crazy numbers even for his standard, scoring a whopping 33.7 points per game alongside 8.2 rebounds and 9.3 assists per game. He has been dropping 40 and 50 points every night, it seems. But what is even more impressive is that the Dallas Mavericks are winning games as well. When this video was made, they held the sixth seed in a very competitive Western Conference and Luca has been getting props for the job he has been doing so far. But has he gotten enough credit? In the last MVP rankings list, Luca was placed at the number five spot behind players like Nikola Jokic and the Greek Freak. There have also been some analysts, if you could consider them as such, like Kendrick Perkins, who have gone out and said that Luka Doncic is not even a top five player, in their opinion. Perkins named Nikola Jokic, Jason Tatum, Kevin Durant, and Steph Curry in his top five, but not Luka. Sure, you can agree on the Joker and maybe even Tatum, who is playing phenomenal this year as well, and is actually number seven on the MVP rankings this season, but having Steph and KD ahead of Luka is kind of delusional. Perk's list is clearly biased against Luka, and the voters seem to be somewhat biased as well. In order to win the Most Valuable Player award, you don't have to be the actual most valuable player in the league. At least not always. That is not how it works. In order to win the regular season MVP, you need to have a mix of three things. Obviously amazing stats, but also great team performance and a good story arc. You may not need all three, but at least two are a must. So far this season, Luka has been averaging more points than everybody in the league except one player. He is third in the league in assists as well, and second out of the top 10 MVP candidates, behind only Tyrese Halliburton. He is doing all of this while having his co-star Kyrie Irving either missing games or playing somewhat limited minutes due to injuries. Luka has had to compensate for Kyrie's absence by playing 36.8 minutes per game, the most out of the other four players in front of him. He also has the most 40-point games this season with six, which is ahead of the NBA points per game leader. Now let's head to the next category, which is team success. While the Mavericks have had a great season so far, the other candidates' teams have been winning more games than the Mavs. Out of the top 10 candidates, Luka is actually ninth in team wins this season, only ahead of Halliburton and the Pacers. The top four candidates in front of him have all had more team success, but they also have better rosters. The top candidate who plays for Philadelphia has Tyrese Maxey as his teammate, who is having a blast of a season and is actually the ninth player in the MVP rankings. The Greek Freak has quite a helping hand this year as well, as the Bucks added Dame Lillard to their roster in the offseason. Dame is having a great season as well, and is 10th in MVP voting this season. The Bucks also have Chris Middleton as their third option, alongside very productive players such as Brooke Lopez and Bobby Portis. Let's not forget about the greatest Bucks player ever, Thanasis. All jokes aside, the Bucks have a stacked roster, and so do the Denver Nuggets. While Nikola Jokic may not have a top MVP candidate on his squad, he has great veteran running mates such as Aaron Gordon and Reggie Jackson, Jamal Murray, and an emerging Michael Porter Jr. The only player that you can argue has the same player quality around him is Shy, but only because the OKC Thunder have the second youngest roster in the league. The Mavericks have Kyrie, who has missed almost half of the games this season as their second leading scorer, and a streaky Tim Hardaway Jr. as their third option. Other than that, they have good role players who you can argue play at that level due to Luka's gravity on the court. However, even though team success may be a category where Luka loses his MVP points, when you look at relative team success compared to the preseason expectation, Luka and the Mavs have been doing a great job. Many analysts predicted them to be not so good and that they would finish at a play-in spot. So far this season, the Mavs are on pace to win 47 games, which is quite more than what these analysts predicted. 
They are currently at the sixth seed as well, which is also better than the play-in spot most analysts reserved for them. So, while team success may not be Luka's main argument for getting MVP votes this season, it is certainly not a counter-argument as well. The third factor in getting your MVP ranking up is the story arc. Sometimes this factor can overshadow the other two. Take for example the 2011 MVP, Derrick Rose. A decade after his MVP season, people who didn't watch the NBA back then will look at the stats and be in shock as to why Rose won the MVP award and not LeBron James. While on the other side, if you ask an NBA fan who watched him perform, he would say that the MVP award was more than deserved as Rose had a phenomenal story that season. A more recent example is Russell Westbrook's 2017 MVP campaign. While Westbrook had amazing numbers, so did James Harden, whose team was actually third in the conference, unlike Westbrook's Thunder, who finished sixth. But what won the MVP for Russ was the storyline. Left by his so-called brother, Kevin Durant, in free agency ahead of the season, a lone wolf carrying his squad and breaking the, what seemed at the time, unbreakable triple-double record which was held by Oscar Robertson. This season, not many MVP candidates have a great story, at least not as good as Luca's. The front-runner, the process from Philadelphia, seems to have gotten people tired of him with his playing style and constant complaining. Many people argue that he cried his way to the MVP in the 2022-23 season, which is not a good sight for him. Nikola Jokic and the Greek Freak are already two-time MVP award winners, and voters are getting fatigued quite quickly. They need a really good season, even better than their current one, to get over the top for a third MVP award. On the other hand, Luka Doncic has a good story behind him. He is in his fifth NBA season, and yet to hit his prime. He has been constantly improving from season to season, breaking all the age-based records in NBA history. Most recently, Luka became the youngest player to hit 1,000 career three-pointers, beating the previous record held by Jason Tatum. Luka also scored his 10,000th career point this season and became the sixth youngest in NBA history to get to that accolade and tied for seventh with NBA legend Bob McAdoo for the fewest games to get there. He also became the fourth player to drop 50 points in a Christmas Day game. To make the story even better, he dropped 50 against one of his bigger rivals, the Phoenix Suns, and the Mavs needed all of those points to get the win over them. This game against the Phoenix Suns was also his second most efficient game in his career, with an efficiency score of 64. Luka is also the all-time Mavericks leader for 40, 45, and 50-point performances, and as of December 17th, he is the all-time leader in 35-point games as well, by getting his 79th such performance, surpassing Dirk Nowitzki once again. He has won one Player of the Week award this season, and is definitely on pace to win even more. He is also on pace to become the greatest Dallas Mavericks player ever, and while it will take a lot more work to get there, he is getting closer game by game. Luka is also the youngest player of the top five MVP candidates. And while the great story is that this year's top five has consisted only of international players, Luka and Shea are the only ones that actually represented their national teams this past summer during the World Cup. While Shai got the better in terms of team success, he once again had the more stacked roster, as Canada was one of the title favorites in comparison to Slovenia, who were missing their second best player. However, both Luka and Shea were part of the tournament's first all-star team, with Luka also being the tournament's top scorer. Although this World Cup performance doesn't play a role in the MVP race, it plays a role in building Luka's story for his case. Luka is a great ambassador for basketball and is taking the game to a more global level, definitely more than the other candidates. Luka is one of the league's most popular players, with his jersey being the fourth most sold jersey in the league, only behind the Greek freak and, of course, Curry and LeBron James. Luka plays the game with a great swagger and makes it look real easy. He is a fan favorite, a franchise player, and a great ambassador of the game, all in one. He is definitely going to get an All-NBA First Team honor this season, an All-Star nomination, and most likely be at least top two in scoring. Will this be enough to win the MVP award? It will most likely come down to how far he can take the Mavericks this season. If Luka manages to carry the Mavericks a seat or two higher, don't be surprised to see him jump a place or two in the MVP ladder as well. He is having a great season so far, 
and he needs to get his flowers too. Best of luck to Luca and the Mavericks in the rest of the season.